Last year, I put together a list of my favorite songs ever, or something akin to that. It's complicated, whittling something like that down. But even a blurry picture can be striking. Looking through it again, I noticed something odd. I mean, it was never hidden, but... In 1993, The Black Dog released this EP, and on it, one of my favorite songs ever, Otaku. I know what this word means, I know its connotations, but I live in the future. What did otaku mean in 1993? In the UK? That was an entirely different world for an anime fan. This, Kid 606's GQ on the EQ++, is also on my list, but that came out in 2000 before the Cool Japan strategy, but after Akira, after Toonami, after some of my favorite anime, after Bubblegum Crisis, maybe it helped to go back. When and where did the Anglosphere start saying otaku? According to Lawrence Ng, anime fans in America were most likely first exposed to the word otaku and its translation as fan in the March 1990 release of Gunbuster. It took seven months to get that OVA into English, and then another seven months for the word otaku to appear on Usenet. That's what this graph is. This little bump? One. The first mention of otaku I can find a record for. Here's the post, or at least the relevant part. The OP is basically just sharing the word as he found it in a Japanese magazine. He's not identifying with it. The next several posts that appear are much the same. Here's an interesting word I found. This trend changed here, August 30th, 1991, AnimeCon. This con had guests from Gainax, who brought with them a preview for their next work, Otaku no Video. They shared this to an audience of nine people. It got a proper release in Japan the following month. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I think this is the patient zero for the word otaku as we know it today. By June, it's everywhere. I found multiple people that identify so strongly with otaku that they put it in their email signatures and proliferated to non-anime groups. We have all been hit by the otaku ray. That said, if you had any exposure to Japanese media at that point, it was probably through video games. Nintendo and Sega were household names. Game magazines the world over were already arguing over whether Sega's cool new mascot is better than Mario. We're focusing on the UK though. In April of 92, the SNES finally made it to the island. One of my favorite magazines of the era first appeared in November of 92, two years after the Super Famicom dropped in Japan, Super Play. It focused on the Super Nintendo, but had a distinctly Japanese flavor. Even the name is in Kana. Inside the magazine, they have a whole recurring section dedicated to sharing the world of anime. In the first issue, Helen McCarthy gives a brief overview and, notably, signs off by calling herself a hopeless anime junkie, or, in a word, otaku. If that word wasn't in the UK already, it is now. Two months later, it's front and center in a US mag. Well, front and left. The first issue of Wired Magazine features the word in Kana and the less than helpful, though provocative, definition of digital sex. And one month later, we're finally at the Black Dog Productions EP that lured me into this rabbit hole. I mean, we could keep going, but I don't think that would help. Our next stop would be the sub-VHS release of Otaku no Video. Uh, this is notable for its inclusion of liner notes that state, in past tense, that the word otaku has already migrated to America. I guess that checks out. They also mentioned that the term is multidisciplinary in Japan, but pretty much exclusively refers to fans of anime in English. This connotation is only solidified in my experience. Is that the meaning that Black Dog wanted to conjure in their song? Well, let's go back a little bit. Anime and video games weren't the only things to happen in 1992. Breakbeat Hardcore, Techno, Rave, The Prodigy, and Joey Beltram. The developments in intense electronic dance music were wild around this time frame. Club music was banging. And I guess Steve Beckett, co-founder of Warp Records, wanted respite. In July of 1992, Warp put out a compilation album titled Artificial Intelligence, an album intended to be listened to at home, while lounging, without dancing. Ignore the new connotation of that word, it meant something different 32 years ago. 
The album art doubles as a 90 CG version of a wordless IKEA manual, citing Pink Floyd as the archetype for how to listen to this music. This was a conscious effort. It wasn't like this kind of music was unheard of, but there should be more. Everyone on this album was trying to make a wave with music you could feel with your brain instead of your body. Electronic expressions for the living room. And it worked. So much good music appeared after, from Warp Records, from the artists involved, from sequel albums, and even from parodies. So with that trend in mind, let's go back to the future, or six months into the future anyway. I don't have an actual scan of this issue of Wired, but the text is online. It opens with an explanation of how otaku has a negative connotation in Japan thanks to the otaku murderer, but then shifts to a more wired angle. It paints a picture of an antisocial idiot savant computer geek. I'd like to read an excerpt about an otaku that goes by the name of Zero. Zero often dresses in a plain white t-shirt and ill-fitting jeans rolled up about six inches. He doesn't look at you in the eyes when he talks. He answers quietly with his face to the floor. His face possesses gentle features, but is sickly pale. He threads his way over the tatami floor, which is a high-tech junkyard of old computer circuit boards, obsolete monitors, archaic disk drives, and a sputtering coffee maker. He sits on a swivel office chair and clicks on his Quadra 900 Macintosh PC with 240 megabytes of storage. As he waits for the computer to boot, he scans the rolls of newly arrived faxes. Do you see it? This isn't just some anime fan. This is a special flavor of geek. I think this is the image that Black Dog had in mind when they titled their track. High tech, but junkyard. Connected digitally, but isolated physically. Brilliant, but narrowly. Alone, but not lonely. Otaku. This is, of course, just my interpretation of the data though. From my digging, Andy Turner, the Black Dog member that actually composed Otaku, specifically described himself as not otaku in 2023. When asked to name an anime, he gave the 70s Battle of the Planets. Not even Akira. But this is also from a man that scored an entire anime movie. But this is also 30 years removed from the original song. But I'm satisfied with this interpretation. It's a distant picture of a distant past, but I love what these lines have drawn. Thanks for listening. <laughs>